the vacuum gauge is a very precision device. It will very quickly show you leakage in your components. So we want to make sure we're using good components to start with. If you cannot pull a vacuum and hold a vacuum, the first thing you need to check is the connections at your hoses, your core tools, your connector, make sure all those things are tight. Sometimes it's very helpful to use a drop of oil or a drop of nylog on there to make sure that the rubber gaskets are seated properly. You want to make sure that you don't over tighten things, especially O-rings. A lot of the core tools contain O-rings. If you over tighten those O-rings on there, you can damage them and tear them and they will no longer hold a good vacuum. Another area we often see problems is right at the vacuum pump itself. These plastic caps that are installed on here contain O-rings and if that O-ring falls out, it's a good probability you're going to have a leak right at the pump. While this pump doesn't have an isolation valve, you know, that you typically close on the side, a lot of pumps do and those also leak. You cannot depend upon those to be a vacuum tight seal. They're really meant to close off to keep your oil dry when the pump's not in service and to keep the oil from spilling out if the pump tips over in your truck. So again, we want to make sure that, uh, that we closely check these areas for leaks before we blame the vacuum connections at the, at the uh, sensor because uh, we can leak from anywhere in the system. If you get on the phone with technical support, they may ask you to run the calibration procedure in a vacuum. And again, a thermistor vacuum gauge can be calibrated in or out of a vacuum. So we do this simply to make the troubleshooting process easier over the phone. However, it's not required. Anytime during the evacuation, you can switch the unit to calibrate, trim the pot, make sure it's adjusted to the sensor, and then go back into the read mode without any downtime. When adjusting the potentiometer, you should get a very smooth reaction with the gauge. If the potentiometer is damaged, what you'll see is erratic operation. The needle will bounce around and that's a good indicator that you need to send the unit in for service and get that potentiometer replaced. The 4510 sensor is a sealed unit. It's completely soldered shut, so it's very unlikely that you'll ever get a leak in, a, in the sensor unit itself. However, they can get dirty. Uh, obviously, you do draw a vacuum on the sensor and you can pull oil up inside the sensor and contaminate it. And again, that's why I want to keep the sensor cap. We're not using it to keep dirt oil or other things out of it that are going to affect its calibration. If it does get dirty, we can take a small amount of uh, alcohol, put a small amount of alcohol into the sensor itself, so just squirt it right in there, put your finger on it, shake it up to clean it, pour the alcohol out, and then we'll put the sensor on the vacuum pump, run it for a few minutes to dry it, break the vacuum, run it for a few minutes again to dry it, and then we can check its calibration against another sensor. It's always a good idea to have two of these sensors in your toolbox, one uh, that we use for our primary measurement and one to compare it against if we think we have a problem. If we're going to use battery to power the thermistor vacuum gauge, we periodically need to make sure that we go to the calibrate mode and make sure that on our calibration scale that it agrees with our sensor. Whenever you're using batteries, they do deplete over time and it will change your calibration set point. So it's a good idea while well, under a vacuum, while the system's running, that you periodically just flip from read to calibrate, check the calibration, adjust it if needed, and then go back and get a nice accurate reading on your vacuum measurement. As part of the general maintenance, loose batteries can also present a problem. Especially if you ever drop the unit on the ground, the battery, just the weight of the batteries can actually bend the connector on here. So we want to make sure that the batteries are always in snug and the connectors are tight against the ends of the battery. The 4501 and the 14571 will give you years of troubles free service with some simple maintenance. The most important thing are keep your sensors clean, keep a spare sensor on hand, and don't lose faith in the unit because most of the time our problems are in our connections, not in the product itself. This is Jim Bergman for Imperial Tool. Thanks a lot for watching.